excited to say we can welcome Ashley McCarthy of the West Coast Eagles this morning, live from Perth. Good morning to you, Ashley. Hi, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. Uh, we should start with the unfortunate matter of, of the injury at the weekend. Uh, how are you getting on and, and what happened? Um, yeah, I'm not actually too bad. Um, I'm very grateful that I'm actually after escaping um, a fairly, what could have been a fairly serious knee injury. So um, I got scans on Monday and structurally everything seems to be okay. My knee did the job it was meant to do uh, with the impact that um, I got. So um, I'm a little bit sore and it just depends on how I go over the next um, few training sessions, whether I can play at the weekend or not. Um, so um, it just kind of day by day at the minute, but I'm just kind of counting my blessings that I do have um, the rest of the season to look forward to, um, hopefully, um, and that it wasn't a season ending injury. So um, I was just very lucky, I suppose. Um, and it just shows that in a split second, um, so something so silly can happen and um, you can get injured. So um, I'm just delighted that um, the scans have come back um, fairly positive so far. So what happened? You you went up for a ball and landed directly down onto one of your knees. Um, no, I actually was. So basically, when people go for a contest, um, usually a couple of people stay down in what you call as the trap, which is where if someone doesn't catch the ball, um, that's the area potentially that the ball is going to drop to. Um, so that's where I was standing. Um, but the ball actually ended up going out over the sideline. So I was running towards the sideline, and um, an opposition player fell out of that marking contest from midair. Um, and actually did a tumble into the side of my leg. So um, I was kind of got a blunt force into the side of my left knee. Um, so at the time, um, looking back at some of the footage, it did look like I potentially could have um, badly damaged my knee, but um, all is good so far. I'm just a little bit sore. So I'm just kind of trying to recover now and um, see what I can do over the next few days and um, hopefully put my name forward for selection, um, if not this weekend, over the coming weeks. Right, God, that must be a great sense of relief when you realise it's only going to be one or two weeks out. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose, you know, going for a scan at all, um, a lot of kind of thoughts go through your head and um, you kind of have to start having a lot of doubts. So um, Monday, I, my knee was quite swollen, so I was afraid that potentially there could have been something um, wrong. But when I got the all clear yesterday, I was delighted. So, um, yeah, I'm just thankful that, I, that it's not a season-ending injury and that um, potentially I can. Um, continue to get a few games under my belt over the next few weeks. The injury happened in the defeat against the Greater Western Sydney Giants. Uh, it hasn't been an amazing season for you guys so far, but for you personally, how do you feel you're playing and how do you feel you're handling, I guess, maybe a little bit of poor form for the team in general? Um, yeah, I guess. Look, we're a new team. Um, last year was the first um, season that West Coast Eagles actually had a team um, in the competition. So we are playing against teams that have had five preseasons together. Um, which, you know, it does mean a lot. Um, girls playing with each other for five consecutive years and um, they've built a game plan and had five pre-seasons together. So um, we kind of know we're a bit off those big teams at the moment, um, but we are building and we've seen glimpses of what we can do over the last few weeks, um, but it's just about putting up together a four-quarter performance um, and being more consistent. So that's kind of our goal over the next um, few weeks. But yeah, look, I'm really enjoying, obviously, I moved to a new club and um, I'm just enjoying um, life playing football and outside of football at the moment. And it is a brilliant club. They've made, made me so welcome. And I think they've kind of ticked all the boxes of life outside football. So the only thing I have to worry about is um, stepping onto that pitch and, and enjoying myself and expressing myself. And I think, you know, they do get the best out of their players. But um, we have a few things definitely to work on. Um, but it's a, a brilliant group to be part of and there's a great culture there. So... Um, I think it's building um, for the future as well um, is what the club's aim is at the moment. How did that transfer come about, Ashling? Because it was uh, most unusual. In fact, I think it was the first time an international player had transferred between clubs. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, it was very foreign for me, especially coming from a Gaelic football background. And, you know, I was quite nervous about making that move. But um, they, I suppose, came um, to chatting to me and um, they just got to know me as a person, um, what was important to me and um, my career prospects, I suppose, outside of sport. And over the last 12 months with the global pandemic, um, I realised you're not going to have sport forever and it can get taken away from you so quickly. So I realised it's really important to develop my life outside of football and um, that's something that they're helping with over here. So we actually can't work because of our visa restrictions, but um, I'm getting the opportunity to shadow um, in a clinic that's attached to the um, club. So just being able to continue to upskill my physio um, skills and learn new things is really important. So that was a um, factor in the move. Um, but 
also just um, like they're a great club and I just really like um, their vision going forward. So I just really wanted to be a part of it. Ireland is uh, never far away, Ashling, and you came right up close with it again last weekend. Core Staunton, uh, back to her very best. I was watching uh, the highlights in TG Carr the other night and watching Cora's interview afterwards, and she probably touched on some of what you were saying there of the preseason wasn't quite right, the difficulty she had with the quarantining over Christmas and all that, but uh looked as though she's back to her very best with four goals. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was Cora's day all right at the weekend, and, you know, fair play to her. Um, She's done it all really in ladies football and um, she's um, excelled as well um, in Aussie rules. So, yeah, look, um, we she uh, took us to the cleaners a bit there at the weekend with her four goals, but um, fair play to her. And, um, yeah, as you said, they had a bit of a, a rocky road um, with their quarantine. They were uh, on quite a move as well throughout their preseason. Um, so I think it's looked a bit different for every club so far and everyone has to come up against their um blips but um i think you know it's about the team that's the most adaptable and flexible um over the course of this season and i think core did um, extremely well at the weekend am i right in saying ashling that when you changed club you also changed position um well in my so this is my third season in my first season i predominantly played in the forward line and then last year i would have played a bit of both so um in the midfield and going forward and then this year, I'm probably spending a bit more time in that midfield role, but I also do go forward a little bit. So um, around the midfield, it's just about hunting the football. It's quite physical. And I think that's where I can um, bring out my competitiveness and my um, my strength. So um, it probably has enabled me to um, express myself a bit more and play to my strengths. So I'm really enjoying um, having more time in the midfield. And um, it's kind of, you don't have to rely on anyone else to get you the ball when you're playing there because um, I suppose that's where you have to win the football for your team and get it going in the right direction. So I just like being in the, in the middle of it, of it all. So the, the aim is to make turnovers, essentially get the tackles in. Um, yeah, and there's contests as well. So I suppose if someone gets tackled and didn't have prior opportunity to get rid of the ball, it would end up in a ball up, which is similar to two um, tall players, like a basketball throw up. And we'd be the kind of smaller players around the fall of the ball. Um, so just using a lot of body work to push people out of the way, get out of the tight spaces and get the ball out to our teammates on the outside. And then a lot of our outside players would be um, similar to like Neve and Grace Kelly, who are um, elite runners, you know, they're fast and they'd be more on the outside ones. So we're the kind of um, doing the hard, dirty work on the inside and getting it out to those type of players on the outside. But um, I really enjoyed the challenge um, that it does bring um, and just getting the ball going forward for our team. How different is that intensity then when you're in the thick of it as a midfielder compared to playing football back home, for example? Um, yeah, it definitely probably is a little bit different regards um, fitness, I suppose. I'm a midfielder at home and it's more kind of getting up and down the pitch between the 45s and getting forward and I can to score. And also, obviously, if I'm on a, a very attacking midfielder, I have to track back too. So it is kind of more of a constant running up and down the pitch with um, explosive efforts, whereas this type of midfield in AFLW um, is a lot more body work. So you can um, push off your opponent, um, shoulder in a lot of groundwork. So picking the ball up off the ground and breaking through tackles. So um, it's kind of explosive efforts, but also using a lot of strength and physicality. So it does um, tire you out a little bit, but then we also have rotations um, in Aussie rules. So I might go in there for five minutes and um, if I'm feeling gassed, I can head to the bench for two minutes, get a breather, get a drink of water. And then when I feel like I can give 100%, I get back onto the pitch as soon as possible and go again. So um, it is a little bit different in that sense. I think you're using kind of different energy systems and um, uh, different kind of strengths and um, things. So it's, it is quite different, I think. Those rolling subs then, Ashling, how does that feed into the game plan at the start so that do you have a certain amount of time that you're going to stay on and you know you're coming off or is it a is it more of a personal choice and it changes game to game um so beforehand you will be told about what um your rotations are so for example uh, last weekend the first quarter i would have stayed in the midfield for four minutes went forward and then came off um or you might play through uh, a full quarter if the if the team want, want you to but at any stage if you feel like you can't give 100 percent or you can't track back there's no point in being on the pitch um, so you get off and uh, someone else that has is full of energy after their two minute break or two minute spell um, can get on and do your job. So it's just about putting your hand up and being honest when you're not able to make it to the different contests or track back. 
Um, but also there is kind of a framework there beforehand where you know potentially you're playing this full quarter or you might be coming off at different stages or going into a different position at different times. So there's kind of a loose framework um, and then it just depends on honesty and obviously injuries throughout the game change all that as well because you'd be down a player um, in the rotations too. I mentioned there the sure. highlights on TG Cahar, uh that are on now every week. Uh, I'm sure that's made a big difference for your family and friends as well. It's no longer a case about a side out of mind that they can tune in every Monday night and they can see exactly what's going on. Yeah, everyone's delighted at home, um, especially, I suppose, all our parents. Um, they don't have to go searching online for um, streams of the game and um, it's they have it there on a Monday night and they can see how everyone else is getting on too. And, you know, it increases the coverage of um, the sport in general. Like a lot of people um, wouldn't have seen any games and um, it's really nice as well at the moment, obviously, with a pause on the GA that people have something to tune into as well. And um, it's great that TG Cahar, um continue to have great coverage of um, ladies sport. You know, we see it with ladies football, um, now the athletics as well and um, AFLW. So it is brilliant that they continue to promote um, ladies sport. I won't lie, I think we all, maybe even up to two, three months ago, looked at Australia and looked at the life that people were leading in Australia and thought, this is brilliant, this is going to be our future soon. And we looked at it in sort of hope and expectation, whereas now, watching the coverage the last night, and it seems like a real family setup around the league, that quite often there's barbecues going on around the ground, there's a lot of families, there's a lot of kids, there's a, a lot of fun there, and you're looking at it and going, oh my God, we are so far away from this, it's quite depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I try not to, um, you know, if I'm chatting to my family and friends at home, I try not to rub it in too much. But like life is pretty normal here. And um, it's actually not until a few weeks ago, there was one case here in Western Australia. We went into a five day lockdown and that's probably when reality hit again, um, that I realized what everyone was going through at home. So, you know, it, it is tough times, definitely. And, you know, hopefully at some stage that it will be um, the same as it is out here. And you know, we've been affected a little bit. Some games, if there is a case here and there, um, there wouldn't be any spectators. So they are very conservative in their approach over here. But, um, you know, we are enjoying life while we have it. And we're so grateful um, that we are able to play sport at the moment and enjoy a bit of freedom. So um, we're definitely um, not taking it for granted anyway. Ashley, I must say we are absolutely honoured. You've clearly decided to spend your birthday in our company. Oh, I didn't know that you'd know that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't go too mad anyway. Um, you know, recovering from the weekend and um, it's a rolling season. So we have a game every weekend. So I can't get up to um, too much anyway. Um, so uh, That's what you're saying on. in case they're watching now, Ashley. There's probably some sort of an Irish <laughs> pub somewhere. Rob Carney will be in oh, there. Everyone will be, get, everyone will be getting <laughs> together. <laughs> oh, yeah. There might be one up the road. You never know. But uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to say I'm being good anyway. <laughs> Well, happy birthday. Uh, we've just actually just found that out over the last little while. So what, what is the plan? What does a professional athlete get up to for her birthday? Um, well, we actually have the day off today. So um, that just um, happened to be a coincidence. So we headed to the beach earlier, just um, myself, me, and Grace Kelly, and a couple of our friends um, who aren't working either. And um, we just chilled out for a little bit. And we're just home there. And we might go out for dinner later. But yeah, nothing too hectic. Um, as I said, you know, it is an, a nine-game home and away season, and once the games start, they roll every weekend, and um, it is really important to recover and, and get up um, for the next weekend and be able to perform. Um, and, uh, you know, this is round five coming up and fatigue is setting in, so I can't have too much fun, um, but it's nice to be able to have a bit of downtime. How does Perth compare to Melbourne, actually, uh, as cities? Like, are you, are you preferring life now? Um, they're very different. Um, obviously, the weather is similar. It's probably a bit hotter here in Perth, um, but this is more kind of beach vibes. Um, it's a quieter, um, smaller city, um, and yeah, it's just um, the coastline is very vast, so all the beaches are lovely. Whereas Melbourne was more um, city life, a bit busier. Um, but yeah, you know, they're they are similar enough, and you know, it's brilliant that I'm able to marry playing professional sport with a bit of travel and. I'm so fortunate that I have got to see two different parts of Australia. And, you know, when we go play games as well, we get a glimpse of, you know, Sydney last weekend and Brisbane the weekend before. So it is um, nice to be able to to see um, other parts of the world that I wouldn't have been able to um, only for this opportunity. Um, so, you know, I'm really enjoying it. Great to hear. Well, Ashling, congratulations on everything so far. Best of luck with the recovery from injury and happy birthday once again. Thanks a million for taking the call. Thanks a million for having me.
Ashley McCarthy there on the line of the West Coast Eagles and, of course, of Tipperary football as well.